I recently completed a 104 day adventure living out of a backpack while traveling through 15 countries and 35 cities, all while trying to continually progress towards my fitness goals. So let me take you on a journey across the world as I uncover the lessons I've learned about training, nutrition, and recovery from some of the most fascinating cultures and make sure you stick with me until the end of the video because I'll be sharing my top five actionable tips that you can apply to your busy lifestyle to progress towards your own fitness goals. The journey begins in the city of Melbourne. After recovering from a 17 centimeter tear in my hamstring, I just returned to the best shape of my life. Weighing in at 87 kilograms after completing my final workout in Australia, I loaded my backpack with pre-workout and protein bars and hopped on a jet to fly to my first destination, Tokyo, Japan. Yeah. Japan was one of the most surreal cultures I had ever experienced. I honestly felt like I was on another planet. From the excessively polite people, mouth-watering food, ancient temples, and futuristic tech, I fell in love with all aspects of Japan and was fortunate enough to be accompanied by my friend Anya from the UK, who was honestly a lifesaver when it came to navigating around Japan's futuristic public transport system. One of the main reasons for visiting Japan was to meet up with one of my best friends, Masa, who was born and raised in Tokyo. To my surprise, the Anytime Fitness chain I'm a member of in Australia has hundreds of gyms scattered throughout Japan, so I had plenty of options during my two-week adventure. Each morning, I would wake up at roughly 5 a.m., jog to the nearest gym to smash out a training session while everyone else was sleeping. The main reason I train first thing in the morning while traveling is because exercise is a great way of setting your circadian rhythm, which is especially important when migrating across different time zones. I find I have the most energy in the morning since my body has literally just been lying motionless for hours and it prevents my training from being an inconvenience to anyone else I'm traveling with getting it out of the way so I have the full day free to explore. During my entire trip, I rotated through six full body workouts, modifying them depending on the equipment I had available. The main reason for doing full body workouts is to provide flexibility with my training since you're hitting a muscle group every single day. It doesn't really matter if you can't stick to the perfect training schedule, which is pretty much impossible while traveling. Additionally, it assures that I can hit each muscle group with enough frequency to still make progress, but the volume during each session isn't too high that I struggle to recover. However, as you soon will find out, recovery while traveling was one of my overall biggest challenges. I managed to get a solid workout in every day of my Japanese trip. I didn't stick to a diet since Japan has some of the most mouth-watering food from sensational sushi, flaming ramen, Japanese barbecue, and I even tried the most poisonous food on earth, puffer fish. Being flexible with my nutrition was a goal I set myself since food is such an important part of experiencing different cultures and I balanced the excessive calories with a dramatic increase in my step count. By walking nearly everywhere, I saved a lot of money on Ubers and public transport and it's a great way to really get immersed in the culture. My step count went from averaging 5k steps a day to over 20,000 during most of the months during my travels with some days clocking in at well over 30,000 steps. My training highlight in Japan was sneaking in a workout with my Japanese friend Shin, who was training for a natural bodybuilding show. Check out how ridiculously shredded he is during this show. Despite putting on a little fluff from the late night visits to 7-Eleven, overall I was extremely happy with the consistency of my training while still allowing myself to indulge. But it was sadly time to say sayonara Japan as I was about to experience one of the most extreme gym cultures on the planet. But first, I had a 15 hour layover at what is rated as the finest airport in the world, Changi Airport, Singapore. Despite being home to the largest indoor waterfall, the largest indoor slide, butterfly gardens, and a free cinema, the only gym I could find in the entire airport was this basic lounge gym, which I paid way too much to use, but a quick workout and a nice cold shower had me feeling refreshed as I touched down in the city of Berlin my first time on the European continent. I was fortunate enough to stay with a friend for the full week in Berlin, having access to a kitchen and a fridge, which allowed me to make the most of the world-class German supermarkets. The jet lag was extreme when I first arrived and it took a few days to adjust to the 4 a.m. sunrises and 11 p.m. sunsets, 
the lack of sleep was cancelled out by my excitement of being in a new country and the pristine weather. My step count remained at an all-time high as I explored the city sites and was able to prepare my own food, which saved me money and allowed me to get my nutrition back on track. But the most captivating thing about Germany in terms of fitness was the quality of their commercial gyms. Since Anytime Fitness doesn't exist in Germany, I had to seek out alternatives. As you are probably aware, day passes to most commercial gyms are excessively expensive, and with my tight budget, there was no way I could afford paying 20 euros or more each time I wanted to train. So over the course of my trip, I developed a really good system for a cost-effective way to train. As soon as I got to a new location, I would open up Google Maps on my phone and then search for the closest gyms to where I was staying. Filtering by the gyms within a two kilometer radius, I could then save the ones that had good reviews and equipment, scout their websites and see if they offered any free trials. I managed to save hundreds of dollars by making use of the trial sessions in gyms from all over the world. In terms of Berlin, the fitness culture was thrilling. The quality and variety of equipment was some of the best I had ever experienced, especially in the major commercial gyms like FitX and McFit. Yes, you heard me right. America has McDonald's and Germany has McFit. So no wonder Germans are so jacked. I was like a kid in a candy store, trialing all the new machines and drinking my body weight in sports drink that they had on tap, which was definitely needed to combat the boiling temperatures. My vascularity during my week training in Berlin was insane, but it was soon time to explore another country, the Netherlands. Taking my first European train was a pleasant experience compared to the piss poor public transport we have in Australia, but it was nothing compared to the trains in my absolute favorite country, which I'll get to later on in the video. After seven hours of sitting on a train, I arrived in Amsterdam, dropped my bags and was pleasantly surprised to find an Anytime Fitness merely a few hundred meters away from where I was staying, which was the floor of an empty college dorm room where my friend Ella was studying on exchange. With a free gym so close to my accommodation, I really had no excuses not to train, and nearly a month into my trip, my conditioning was close to an all-time high. Speaking of highs, the few days I got to spend in Amsterdam was certainly filled with some crazy experiences. But unfortunately, my three days of pedaling around this beautiful country and exploring its quaint canals quickly flew by. I managed to safely arrive in the next country of my travels, Denmark. Again, I was fortunate enough to stay with a friend who was studying at university in Copenhagen, making their apartment my home base for the next 10 days. If there was one word that I could use to describe Copenhagen, it would be cosmopolitan. From the fashionable citizens' quaint canals of Nyhaven to the world-class art and music scene, this was easily one of the most livable cities I have ever visited. This is where my fitness was the most dialed in during my whole trip. I purchased a week's gym membership, made most of the high protein options at the supermarkets and trained my ass off. My biggest takeaway from the little taste of the Danish lifestyle is how well integrated cycling is in their culture. It was quicker to cycle into the city than to drive or take public transport. They had separate bike paths, traffic lights, and even cycling only bridges, which made anywhere accessible by bike. Given how cost-effective, environmentally friendly, and overall good for your health cycling is, I'm gonna purchase my own bike now that I'm back in Australia and try to cycle as a form of transport as much as practically possible. Feeling refreshed and civilized after my 10 days in Copenhagen, it was time to hit the skies again, landing in the cultural melting pot that is London. Again, overwhelmed with gratitude from the hospitality of my European friends, I was greeted at 3 a.m. by Ginny, who insisted on sleeping on the couch for the entire week so I could recharge my batteries. With an Anytime Fitness, a short jog across the London Bridge, I began each morning with a solid gym session before exploring London on foot to avoid the overcrowded tube as a consistent theme throughout my trip, I remained excessively active throughout the day, which helped me stay lean. Well over six weeks into my trip, I was honestly quite surprised with how consistent I'd been able to remain with my training. As a person who thrives off routine, the morning workouts helped me stay grounded during a time of continual change and new experiences. Considering how expensive it is to eat out in London and the food isn't really that different from what we find in Australia, 
I would often skip lunch and then prepare a large homemade dinner with Jenny before topping up my protein intake at night with some Greek yogurt and a protein bar. The highlight of my time with Jenny was the seven hour hike we completed over the Shilton Hills. Departing London, I spent a week in Bristol with some relatives before boarding another flight to a country which genetically has some of the strongest people in the world, Scotland. Whether it's the physical brutality of the Highland Games, the traditional high protein cuisine like haggis, or the Viking ancestry, the Scottish people were seriously built. I based myself at a family friend's house in Perth, would train in the morning at the gym across the river and then explore the beautiful country during the day, where the highlight of my Scottish experience was driving to the Glenferry Viaduct, aka the Harry Potter Bridge, and watching the Hogwarts Express steam by. However, one thing that I certainly won't miss about Scotland is the weather. One minute, the sun will be glistening, birds chirping as you enjoy a stroll through the highlands. The next minute, you'll be stuck in a torrential downpour and shivering your ass off. My family friend loved to say, if you don't like the weather in Scotland, then just wait a minute. Continuing the trend of crazy weather, my next destination was a speedy visit thanks to the delayed flight by Ryanair. Europe's worst budget airline. But considering I was traveling on an Irish passport, it would have been rude not to pay Ireland a visit. I only got to spend a few days in Dublin, and despite the crappy weather and not running into Conor McGregor, I snuck in a beautiful hike and a few high protein meals with my mate Carl. Crossing the halfway point of my journey, I was stoked to finally plant my feet in one spot for nearly a week. And what better place to take a breather than Paris, the city of love. My body was relieved landing in Paris since it would be my last flight for a while and economy class certainly isn't designed for six foot five gym rats in mind. Renowned for its iconic landmarks like the Eiffel Tower, historical architecture and exquisite cuisines, Paris really was a special experience. Cardio was again at an all time high as I walked 25,000 steps a day, avoiding the sweaty metro during the European heat wave. But my sleep definitely took a hit as the blow up mattress I was sleeping on in my friend's living room had a hole in it, creating the sleep cycle of death. Every three hours, the mattress would gradually deflate until my back slapped against the floor and it would wake me up so I had to get up and reflate the mattress using the foot pedal. But luckily for me, the gym I found had energy drinks on tap, allowing me to combat my lack of sleep by getting cracked out on caffeine. And I managed to sweet talk a lady to let me use the gym for free in exchange for a Google review. The sleep deprivation had started to take a toll on my training. And although I was still consistent with my workouts, I could definitely feel I was starting to lose strength. I was extremely grateful for the hospitality of my friends as they immersed me in the French culture and I I actually quite enjoyed eating snails. I didn't find love in Paris, but at least I stayed loyal to the gym, since gym will never break your heart. Lusting to escape the busy city crowds, I then hopped on a high-speed train to Marseille in the south of France. The first location where I didn't have any mates to show me around. Unfortunately, my experience in the south of France was short and sweet. On my first day, I got bombarded with a throbbing migraine after my morning gym session. For anyone who has experience with migraines, you'll be well aware that the only true remedy is getting enough sleep. But following my caffeine-fueled workout, that was nearly impossible. So after trying to lie down, I said, stuff it. I'm only here for two days, so I battled through the pounding headache and nausea to hike up to a cathedral in 35 degree heat before cooling off with an ocean swim. But the pain during my stay in the south of France didn't stop at the headache, as the sun turned me into a blistering tomato. France's way of saying au revoir. As the saying goes, another country, another day. As I hopped on a 10 hour bus to what would be one of the most fun, yet physically demanding legs of my entire journey, Spain. Starting in Barcelona, the Spanish city known for its bustling nightlife, crowded beaches, and phenomenal architecture. Now, anyone who has solo traveled knows it can get quite lonely at times. However, luckily for me, in the hostel I stayed at was extremely social, and I immediately made close friends with some people from all over the world to help join me on my Spanish adventure. However, one of the downsides to hostels is that a good night's sleep is practically impossible. 
You were people arriving late at night and rocking up early in the morning pretty much every day. And a bubonic cough was ravaging throughout Europe, piercing my ears every single night. Embracing the vibrant nightlife, I certainly did my fair share of partying. Though as someone who's currently doing 12 months of sobriety, I stuck to drinking protein shakes in the club. With pre-workout acting as the band-aid to my sleep deprivation, I was surprisingly still dialed in with my training. Although it was clear that I had began to lose some muscle mass, the heat and high cardio levels kept me extremely lean as I fueled myself with empanadas. The highlight from Barcelona was Mount Surat, a mystical monastery that is forged in the cliff of a mountain. Despite my mates quitting halfway through the hike to the summit, I stubbornly soldiered onto the top, which was well worth the catabolism for the stunning view. However, there was a few aspects about Barcelona that left a sour taste in my mouth. Firstly, the beaches are far from the city center, crowded and filled with rubbish. And I would instantly get pestered by people yelling, mojito, mojito. But the worst thing was the horrendous pickpocketing. Every single day, someone from the hostel would have their phone stolen while exploring the city. I mean, look at this footage I took on the metro. Now, I'm sure that guy doesn't need to the poor Italian kid who was staying in the same room as me had one of the worst experiences ever. After arriving, he decided to do his laundry at the local laundry mat next to the hostel. But in the split second it took him to transfer his clothes from the washer to the dryer, the only other person in the room managed to unzip his backpack, steal his phone and vanish out of sight. I spent an hour with the poor bloke watching the map on Find My iPhone as his mobile phone decided to take a trip to Morocco. With my phone clenched tightly to my body, I spent two days in Valencia working on my tan and feeling my body with the famous Spanish paella. But I nearly didn't make it to my next destination. En route to the train station with my 35 kilograms of baggage, I waited patiently as four metros were canceled. Checking Google Maps, the station was two kilometers away, but I only had 10 minutes until the train left for Madrid. So I tightened my straps and sprinted, which was probably one of the hardest runs I had ever done, as my knees nearly collapsed under the weight of my backpack. I made it to the train with 20 seconds to spare and certainly felt sorry for the Spanish bloke that had to sit next to my sweat-drenched body. The physical turmoil did not end once I got to Madrid and met up with my mate from back home. With scorching 40 degree temperatures and no way to escape the heat, we soon realized why summertime in Spain Everything closes during the day as the locals enjoy their siesta. The Spaniards certainly have a whack schedule. We would frequently head home after a night out at 2 or 3 a.m. and see families going for a stroll and walking their dogs. Unfortunately for me, my body clock was still set to 5 a.m. so I progressed with the morning workouts. Now there was a high quality gym only 100 meters away from the accommodation, yet my tight ass wanted to save some money so I ran four kilometers every single morning to the closest anytime fitness, would complete my full gym workout and then run four kilometers home. I honestly have no idea how I managed to keep this up for the full five days. Looking back, it was probably overtraining as I was definitely lean and a little bit fatigued. But even to this day, I think back to those mornings which fuel my motivation and destroys any excuses I may have not to get to the gym. With our stomachs full from dollar tacos, it was time to hop on another plane as we touched down in Lisbon, Portugal. One of the most striking things about Portugal is the hilly topography. Walking almost 20,000 steps a day, the elevation gain was insane. Although my calves nearly grew three sizes, the impact on my body nearly prematurely ended my trip. The steep inclines and fatigue started to wear down my Achilles heel. Every successive step became more painful as my tendon felt like it was going to snap. I was unable to wear runners because the pain inflicted on my heel was so unbearable. So I adopted Crocs as my go-to shoe in every scenario even in the gym. Sadly, it was time to say goodbye to my mate as he was heading back to Australia and I was pushing on to my next destination. If the thought has crossed your mind that my obsession to the gym rivals the relationship between an addict and heroin, 
then this next experience will surely solidify your suspicions. When most people have a four hour layover, they sit in the airport lounge and scroll through social media. But as you can already tell, I am not your average Joe. On the stopover in Madrid on my way to Munich, Germany, I decided to sneak through security onto the metro and then run two kilometers to Anytime Fitness, smash out a gym session, and then rush back to the airport, nearly missing my flight. I made the most out of the duty-free perfume samples to avoid stinking up the plane. I wish I had longer in Munich since the summer vibes were immaculate. From people floating down the river, getting on the metro, sopping wet, and then floating back down, to the parks filled with people relaxing, or the natural wave surfing, it was a must revisit. I made sure I stocked up on protein powder since my next destination has the reputation as the world's most expensive country. Yet it was definitely worth the price tag since it was my favorite destination of the whole entire trip. Welcome to Utopia's doppelganger, Switzerland. Now remember Massa, my friend from Tokyo? Well, we actually were housemates while studying on exchange in Canada together. And while I was exploring Europe, I had managed to convince him to fly all the way over to Switzerland to join our other ex-housemate, Pierre, for this Switzerland adventure. With the band back together, we set out to experience everything Switzerland had to offer, which is a heck of a lot. Traveling around on the best train system in the world, we camped in the mountains of Belay, attended traditional Swiss mountain games that consisted of underpants wrestling and cow fighting, and went on countless hikes throughout the postcard perfect scenery. My whole dopamine system was completely overloaded with how pretty it was. I generally had an existential crisis thinking I was in a computer simulation with the vibrance dialed up to max. However, although I was in the most beautiful place on earth, Physically, I had never felt worse. See this picture here, looking like I am in the best condition of my whole entire life, with the abs popping out of my stomach on this beautiful Swiss mountain. Well, unknowingly to me, at the time I had been infected with the spicy cough, and I felt chronically fatigued. Despite the sickness, I was still working out early in the morning as I found a private 24-hour gym and paid nearly $100 for a week's membership. So to satisfy my addiction and wanting to get my money's worth, I worked out at 4 a.m. every morning even when I hiked the Swiss Alps for over seven hours during the day. It's fair to say that I have never pushed my body to these extremes. The only reason my body didn't shrivel up to dust was Switzerland's obsession with cheese. They literally eat it by the pound. Whether it's steaming hot fondue or just melting it on the plate and eating it raw, they have cheese for every occasion. They even have a bloody vending machine filled with blocks of cheese. Extremely grateful to my friends for giving me a complete tour of Switzerland, keeping a roof over my head and making home-cooked meals to avoid the exuberant prices, it was sadly time to say goodbye to Massa and Pierre as I boarded the train to my final destination, Italy. Now, I loved Italy but honestly pushed myself way too hard. Since I had family back home in Australia who was sick, I wanted to see as much as possible in such a short space of time. Enter the Italian speed run. Still recovering from the spicy cough, I spent one night in Milan before heading to the romantic canals of Venice, which was pretty yet rained the whole time and was filled with couples taking romantic gondola rides. But I couldn't complete my final country without some hiccups. After buying a bus ticket to Florence, I waited at the bus stop patiently as buses from alternate companies came and went. After four hours, I gave up and realized the bus was not going to show up. Unable to get a hold of any customer service, I was forced to book a last minute train ride which stung me over 100 euros. I finally got to Florence and managed enough time to marvel at the stunning architecture of the city. I then hit up Rome, which was truly a historical masterpiece from the Vatican Museums, the Roman Forum to the Colosseum which once hosted gladiators with physiques I now aspire to achieve. Now I'm not a religious person, yet if you do one thing in Rome besides eat gelato, you should go to the St. Paul's Cathedral. I can't describe the feeling, but walking in there, your whole body just gets absorbed by this feeling that truly feels like the presence of God. With Anytime Fitness all throughout Italy, I still snuck in my morning workouts. Battling through the fatigue of being on the road for over 100 days and living out of a backpack really started to settle in as my physique was shriveling. 
but I managed to push through my final destination by filling myself with all the pizza and pasta my heart could desire. Napoli was such a relief from the touristy parts of Rome with a unique, vibrant Italian culture and the best pizza in the world. Now, I was told this before I arrived in Napoli, but it even exceeded my expectations. After visiting the ancient city of Pompeii, it was finally time to fly home. So how did my physique hold up over my 104 days on the road? This is me in my final workout in Australia, and now this is me after my first workout back in the land down under. Although I was three kilograms lighter and lost some significant muscle mass, I was honestly extremely happy with these results considering my sleep quality and nutrition had been significantly compromised over the four month adventure. After trying to maintain a lean physique for way too long, it really stalled my progress in the gym. So with no huge international expeditions planned for the next little while, I am bulking up to 100 kilograms to really try and push my genetic potential. Now, if you've stayed with me throughout this entire journey, then you are the real MVP. And I'd like to share my top five takeaways that I've learned while traveling and training that you can hopefully incorporate into your own routine. Step one, prioritize your protein intake. Diets can be simplified into a few key focuses, first of which being prioritizing your protein intake. Protein is the building blocks of your body's tissues and organs essential for the growth and repair and even overall health. It's also been shown in scientific literature that your body will subconsciously increase its hunger levels until you meet a minimum protein threshold. Put simply, if you eat a diet low in protein, your body will need to eat more calories to meet its protein needs, leading to a less desirable body composition. Personally, I experienced this waking up extremely sore after my workouts on the days I couldn't get enough protein into my diet. I recommend one gram per pound of body weight on top of prioritizing protein if you focus on limiting processed foods, especially sugar, ensuring that you're consuming a variety of different colored fruits and vegetables to meet your micronutrient needs and having leafy greens every single day to reach your fiber needs, you will be well on your way to an extremely effective diet. Step two, never compromise on sleep. Sleep is as if not more important than your training and nutrition for your body composition as well as your overall health. I found that I could get away with suboptimal training and nutrition over periods of my journey, but when my sleep was compromised, I had detrimental physiological and psychological effects on my body. The way I like to conceptualize the importance of sleep is that you can survive up to seven weeks without food, five days without water, but if you try going 48 hours without sleep, your body will just completely shut down. Step three, get your steps in. Try and achieve 10 to 20,000 steps every single day. While I was traveling, my step count went through the roof, clocking in 20 to 30,000 steps a day. And not only did this help me burn calories and maintain my lean physique, despite indulging in many delicious foods, but it also significantly improved my digestion. It has been shown that a short walk after meals can significantly improve your digestion, which can lead to an overall improved sleep quality and increased metabolism. While I was traveling, I didn't have a choice since I often had to walk two kilometers to and from a restaurant for dinner. But since I've been back, I really wanna try and implement this into my daily routine by going for a short walk after meals. Step four, mental motivation. There's really no excuse not to get a workout in. Now I admit I'm abnormally obsessive when it comes to training and by no means do you have to take it to the extremes that I do. From waking up at 4 a.m. to train in Switzerland before a seven hour hike, or having to run four kilometers just to get to the gym in Madrid's 40 degree heat, really changed my perspective on what my body can achieve given the right mental mindset. Now, every time my alarm goes off at 4.30 a.m. and I'm feeling a little tired and lacking motivation to train, I think back to those times I had to run four kilometers just to get to the gym. You will be amazed by the adversity you can mentally and physically overcome by testing your limits and using those times to fuel your motivation for future workouts. Finally, step five, we have fitness is a lifestyle, not a journey. Whether you want to lose 10 pounds of fat, gain 10 pounds of muscle, or add 20 pounds to your squat, the most important mindset I've developed to help me reach my goals 
is viewing fitness as a lifestyle. There's been plenty of studies showing that once people lose the weight they initially set as a goal, they quickly relapse and put it back on because they no longer have that goal to motivate them. When I was a scrawny teenager, my mindset was to fill out my frame and get jacked so I can enjoy my body with minimal training. But as I progress in the gym, I've realized that the most important thing is building the habits that allow you to fundamentally fall in love with training. Now I know I'll still be in the gym in my 70s if I live that long because for me, it's so ingrained into my lifestyle. Like brushing my teeth, I don't have to think or motivate myself to get to the gym and work out. But if I don't get a workout in, I feel gross, just like that furry sensation you get in your mouth after you forget to brush your teeth. By having a long-term time horizon and building up training and nutritional habits that you can sustain for life, you achieve your goals faster and produce more sustainable success. Now, if you made it all the way through this video, then I really appreciate you letting me share my experience with you. I genuinely just want to make quality content that helps people better their own lives and reach their own goals. So consider subscribing and I will see you in the next adventure. Thank you.